Hello, my soccer universe. I was wrong. Yes, I was wrong. And in this age where everyone wants to be right, it probably takes some strength to admit to be wrong. What was I wrong about? Well, I said there are only two ties that are rather open. Arguably, we had four and a half where there was a little bit of excitement in there. That was... That was more exciting than I thought in many ways and uh, vindicated for much of the Europa League. I was totally wrong when I said that I think Spurs are a more stable team than Ar Arsenal and they, I would consider them to be the favorites, that that's all right. Boy, boy was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong about that one. Although Arsenal proved that they are not the most stable of teams. Spurs completely proved me uh, wrong on that one with uh, being an exit at, uh, to Dinamo Zagreb. It was overall not a good e evening for the English teams. However, the one team that I really didn't want to have to have a good evening uh, actually didn't have all that great of an evening either, but uh, they move on over Milan. Um, silver linings there. Silver linings there. Uh, you don't have to play more games. Um, you probably can, 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 you con can concentrate now on Serie A. Um, I am wearing Ajax. Ajax was celebrating their 120th birthday yesterday. Uh, they did not wear red, but this is my latest Ajax jersey. And it's a beauty and it goes very nicely with the outfit that I'm... Outfit. With the pants and whatever jacket I'm gonna wear. I chose to go this one. Uh, let's run through the games. Arsenal Olympiacos. Um, I don't know how much is. I mean, uh, it was definitely in there for Olympiacos to pull an upset. They get the win. Al Arabi scores that one. They had a few chances. Um, I think overall, I, uh, Arsenal was, but the more mature team. And if Aubameyang would have his shooting boots on, I think. They could have even snatched a draw there. I mean, what Obama Young was missing at some, especially in the second half when he was running alone on, onto the goalie, that was almost comically. So, um, you know, mixed feelings on that one. Uh, it just goes to show you cannot trust Arsenal at all. Even we, uh, didn't hurt them too much, even 3 1 up. Um, Olympiacos needed to win by three goals clear. And that never was going to happen in a way. So, yeah. Let's. Pull it, uh, we say the code of silence over this game. Uh, Molde Granada in Budapest. In Budapest is becoming Euro, uh, European Cup central in many ways. Who would have thought about that? And especially Molde again having another exit from a competition in Budapest, given that they were eliminated from the Champions League um, qualifi uh, qualifying rather the playoff uh, to Ferenc Varos in Budapest. Uh, Weird game, but uh, it had more excitement in there than anyone would have ever expected. Uh, because everyone thought Granada is going to run away with this one. And Granada actually would have run away with this one because they started out really brightly and really well. The problem is uh, Vallejo scores an own goal out of nowhere. It was a cross in, he tries to clear it, but the way he goes about it, uh, absolute mess. And it is 1-0 Molde. And then Molde even had some chances to make it probably 2-0. They were going for it. Um, I have a Roberto Soldado. Puts it uh, to rest at 1-1 in the 72nd minute. Moldado gets the win, which is good probably for the Norwegian rank ranking with Hestad converting a penalty penalt in the 90th. Uh, but up until Soldado made it 1-1, that game was very much open. Which we cannot say about um, Shakhtar Donetsk played in Kiev <laughs> uh, against Ice Roma. But uh, they have been playing in Kiev uh, consistently, given the situation in Donetsk and blah, blah, blah. Which really, really is sad because the state Stadium in Donetsk is such a uh, nice day. It's the stadium and it has not seen any play for a long, 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 long time. It was a game where Schachter, I think, initially tried to put some pressure on Roma. Then Roma got control of the game. Uh, had chances but did not score initially. However, as the game moved on, uh, early second half, Mayoral gets the first goal. Moraes, uh, 10 minutes later, can equalize, but you know, with that goal by Mayoral, the game was more or less done, and Mayoral gets then late on in 72nd, another one, uh, uh, and sends Roma very safely to through next round. I have to say, I'm very impressed with Roma uh, in this knockout stage so far. They have been winning all their games, not against the best uh, uh, opposition, uh, to be fair, uh, but it looks rather, rather, rather safe. 
rather safe, I thought, was also uh, Spurs against Zagreb. Um, they were dead dumb, dumb in the first game, and yes, Zagreb played well, but I think Spurs, uh, bro, if they would have turned turned on a little bit, they could have well scored a third third as well, and I think this was the danger there. Uh, that Spurs thought, yeah, we have those guys in the back, because the only beautiful thing about Spurs were their away jerseys. I have to say, again, jersey matchup, I really li like it. I heard the other uh, day that some someone thinks they look like goalkeepers. No, I actually like all yellow uh, away kits. I think they provide they provide uh, more and better contrast than white. I think white would 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 have looked like red, but with this dim lighting anyway, uh, in Zagreb, I think the yellow looked really 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 nice. Uh, but that's the only thing I can say positive was about Bob Spurs Zagreb. Took on the fight. I mean, they made this stupid headline. We want the British uh, to forget about the scandal of opera and whatever, you know, that crazy stuff. That was never gonna happen in the first place. I mean, Spurs is not as big. Let's face it. Uh, but Zagreb really pulled, pulled out of a fight, and uh, Orsic with a wonderful goal in the seven, 60 se uh, second minute, made it 1-0. And I think up until that point, I think Spurs thought, yeah, we are cruising. I mean, it looks comfy. We, we will probably get this. When that goal came in, and it was a wonderful shot from the edge of the box, uh, I think nerves were going high. And then um, Mourinho already had brought on bail. He took off uh, Dele Alli, brought on Don Bale. I mean, also the lineup for was not, 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 not great. And she really became, uh, got to hit the fan when Orsic scores a second in the 80, 80, 83rd, completely unmarked in the box. I mean, the defending of Spurs was symbolic. It has to be said though that at that point, and that was only when really uh, shit was about to hit hit, hit the fan, that um, Spurs realized, yeah, we can do something about it. There was a chance where uh, Bale's cross hits Kane, uh, which saved off the line. Uh, I think there was a free kick that you would think that Bale can do better. It goes to overtime. And in overtime, uh, when you saw it, it was always that Spurs had control of the game, but you never had the feeling that they're taking this seriously. They're gonna go straight to penalties. Although you have Kane up there, you have uh, Bale up there, you and then you even brought on Bergwijn later on after uh, it, it, it got really bad. But again, right 40 seconds into the second half of overtime, Orsic scores his hat-trick. Wild scenes in Zagreb. Meanwhile, supporters have already come out and were singing outside of the stadium. Yeah, COVID times and Balkans always works beautifully. Um, and it is 3 0. And at that point, then Spurs were finally trying. And there was an incredible sequence around the 115th where uh, goal line clearance, everything in there. But it told you everything about the game. Every shot of Spurs was kind of tentative and lacking a little bit the last bit of punch behind it. Whereas Zagreb put everything in there to clear the ball and keep the clean sheet and knock Spurs out of the out of, out of Europe. Very well deserved. Mourinho was dejected. I think it might well be the end of Mourinho at Spurs, although I heard multiple arguments and I thought a little bit, yeah, maybe those players need to move on as well. I mean, that team, it's still very much the team that uh, fell apart after Pochi's reign, Pochettino's reign. Um, so yeah, gotta see. God, gotta, gotta see. But that really, really hurts because I think, I still would say, if Spurs played how Spurs can, can play, they would very much be the favorite in this comp competition, but the favorite is out. Fortunately, the other favorite man, Manchester United, and uh, as we see, the other huge favorites. Let's first praise the Jersey matchup. Uh, not sure if I would say it's the um, was the best Jersey matchup of the team, but it was the most spectacular. I mean, all my favorite, my favorite colors in there. I was hoping that United will play in their white and black crazy kit. Milan at home, yeah. All perfect. Uh, Milan at first hung back, and probably they should have done it for the entire game. Let United uh, be more pro, uh, pro proactive. But United then started hanging back, and Milan got a hold of the game. I actually was watching the overtime um, on a pair parallel. So at the first 20 minutes, I didn't get that that much. I, I just can report what uh, I was heard for, uh, what I heard from the commentators. But I have, have to say that. Around the 30th, Milan really had control of the game, not producing all that great chances, although Salamakers had a really good shot. But I had the feeling that at this point, uh, with a, 
I don't know, a little bit more precision, a little bit more uh, concentration, but you know, the season is already so long. I mean, Milan started in the second qualifying round. Milan really could have, could have, could have gotten a goal there. Uh, at halftime, Solskjaer reacts Rashford off, who was a no-show. No Pogba comes on, and yeah, uh, whatever they didn't, uh, the goal came in the 49th, and the ball more or less falls to Pogba, and uh, I really, this was just weird defending. Uh, you cannot have two United and United players here. And then the way it, it uh, happened, I thought, Pogba has, has the ball, he's hesitating, maybe, maybe he wanted to pull the cross in first. And then I see, oh no, there's the, the, the near corner, is, is free. He will not pull it there, no, he pulled it there. 1-0 uh, United, and I thought at that point he already should have brought on Slatan. Uh, again, it was like in the first half, Milan took a while to get control. I think United very well could, could have killed, killed the game up until the point where Ibrahimovic came on. Um, that... Not that they were so dominant, but I felt that Milan uh, was very insecure at that point. Uh, Ibrahimovic comes on, but he only has one real chance. He was a lot in offside. Celanoglu uh, killed uh, with one cross almost um, Harry Maguire. There were just a few situations. I mean, there was not much danger coming, but Milan at least tried a little bit, but it was a little bit unconvincing. And sometimes, I, I remember one where I think uh, Hernandez, no, it was Salamakers on the left, uh, and you had uh, another player clear on the right. If you make the cross immediately, I think you have a chance, but then they, he takes the fur, further says, wants to play the end, United can uh, org, or organize in, in, in the end. Yeah, United goes through. As the more clever, not necessarily the better team. I think over both games, I think Milan was the better team, but United were more clever. And that sees them through. And yeah, uh, congr congratulations on winning that one. Um, as I said, silver lining, I think it is probably not bad for Milan to have now full weeks to prepare for Serie A games. I think this will do them a whole lot of good. I really do. Uh, that's. Uh, and maybe get that uh, top four finish. And having now the assurance that Roma at least has has, has to play two more rounds. So, um, uh, meaning for the top four race, it might be not the worst thing for Milan to get eliminated. Although I really, really want Milan to win. Finally win to Europa League. That's the only competition they have not won yet. Yes, there will be another one next season. But, you know, who wants to win the Europa Conference League? Rangers Slavia, Oy, that was the team of the unbeaten uh, uh, league leaders and in case of Rangers already champions, um, but it didn't go Ranger, Rangers way. Ol Olajinka heads, heads it in or, or in the 4 or 14th in a game that I think Slavia, from all that I could tell from the highlights and so on, Slavia largely uh, were in control and uh, Slavia is a team that should have been in Champions League. I, I, I remember against mid Juland, they were most of the time the better team and then they just collapsed at, at the end. Um, but Rangers also shot themselves majorly in the foot. I mean, the way Roof goes up with his foot into the um, face of the goalie, um, it was ugly. Ugly. You cannot do that. You simply can't, 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 can't do that. They took... Uh, ah, I mean, absolutely, absolutely disgusting. And then a few, a few minutes later, but, uh, Another Rangers rain, rain player sent off for a, sec, a second yellow, just, yeah, it was a yellow card. Set off and from the free kick stand show. Wonderful free kick, May, may makes 2 0 in Slavia, really cruising there. Cruising also via Real against Dinamo Kiev, uh, Gerard Moreno get, get, getting both goals. I think the most exciting thing about that was that I really had a hard time to find a picture for this game because all the pictures I could find were mostly from the first game in Kiev. You have to look at the seats. And also cruising Ajax against Young Boys. Uh, young Boys at the first, uh, had probably the first big, big, big chance, but you know, um, Ajax is just technically so, so superior. And you could see this on the 1 0 how Tadic uh, plays the ball nicely in, into Neres. Um, there was probably a somewhat valid penalty call for Young Boys, where, yeah, but it was a dangling arm. They, uh, Ajax gets a, a, actually a sec, second goal uh, through a hands penalty by Tadic because uh, the young boy player had the hand up 
makes it 2-0, settles the tie. A goal of from Nzame is, di is disallowed, but Ajax just simply way too good for young boys, who are my favorite Swiss team. And yes, have a friendship with Lask, but uh, personally, I always had a bigger liking for Ajax, so uh, not too unhappy. And I think Ajax is probably the one non-English team, I keep repeating myself, and maybe I'll be wrong again, but that's the one where I really think they could do some damage in this competition. Um, of course, if you just look now at who's qual uh, qualified, my dream final would be Roma against Ajax, but I'm, I'm afraid that uh, the draw will do, um, take care of that one. Um, it will be an interesting draw. I mean, we have Ajax, Villarreal, Roma, Arsenal, uh, Zagreb, United, Slavia and Granada. So two Spanish teams, one Italian, two English teams. And then, you know, uh, Croatia in there and Czech Republic in there makes it uh, actually interesting. The Netherlands, of course, in there as well. Uh, so may, it makes an open condition. I don't really have a dream draw for this one per se. Um, however, I will really would like to see Arsenal against Villarreal just because of Unai Emery. Um, and I don't know, maybe Zagreb against Slavia? Wouldn't be that uh, great to have one of those in the semis, although that means I would not have a jersey for all the four semifinals, which is also something I don't really like, but has been happening regularly. It was two years ago, it was Frankfurt that I didn't have and still don't have, but I'm working on it. I probably one of the next churches I'm gonna get is Frankfurt. Um, last year I didn't have Schachter, so this year, let's see. Uh, probably since I have only four teams left and two very likely will play against each other, let it be United Arsenal. I don't want. I honestly, I don't want to have any match between those four. Uh, but we probably will get that one. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Just to finish this video, the chances. Who are the fav favorites? Um, this is ahead of the draw, and you know I will do a video today also on the draw. Uh, probably will post tomorrow, but let's see. Uh, same thing for the first change. League. But these are the uh, the chances before the draw, where everyone can still play everybody, and it's very much United. Uh, trophy to win uh, given their lofty rating. You see Arsenal and Ajax in there and Villarreal Roma and I think everyone else is an outsider. I was actually surprised how much of an outsider Granada is. I honestly don't see a clear favorite but I would agree that United and Arsenal to the squad depth should be considered the top two teams. I personally, I say it, Ajax is here in third. Ajax is a really good team but that we get uh, a traditional winner of the, of, of the competition. As I said, Ajax or Roma, that would be my wish. So yeah, let me know what you thought about the Europa League yesterday. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I uh, will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!